Cause of spinal cord injury throughout the body. Tetraplegia, also called quadriplegia, usually like cervical injuries. Paralysis of upper and lower limbs and trunk. Usually associated with cervical injury. Paraplegia, usually like thoracic or lumbar injury. Paralysis of all or part of the trunk, legs, pelvic organs. Usually associated with damage in thoracic or lumbar region. Hemiplegia, divided basically cut in half. Paralysis of one half of the body when divided along medial sagittal plane, X. Brown Sequard Syndrome, left and right. Complications of SCI. Cardiovascular autonomic dysreflexia can lead to seizures, stroke if not treated immediately. Deep respiratory decreased lung capacity equals difficulty breathing, risk of atelectasis, pneumonia. Integumentary pressure sores inhibited wound healing, high risk of burns, cuts, because they don't have feeling so you know if they were to accidentally put something hot on their lap or if they were using like a heating blanket but didn't realize that it was burning them. Urinary, indwelling or intermittent catheterization increases risk of urinary tract infection, UTI, kidney infection caused by urine backing up to kidneys. Emotional changes, grief and loss of mobility and independence, anger, depression. Diagnostic tests, x-ray, malogram, CT, MRI, arterial blood gases, AVGs, should be monitored regularly to evaluate oxygenation, ventilation, hemoglobin and hematocrit to detect major blood loss. A malogram is a diagnostic imaging test generally done by a radiologist. It uses a contrast dye and x-rays or computed tomography CT, to look for problems in the spinal canal. Problems can develop in the spinal cord, nerve roots, and other tissues. This test is also called malography. Surgical interventions. Timing is controversial. Early decompression versus late decompression. Perform to stabilize, support spine. Bone graft. External fixation or traction. Pearson page 973. Gardner Wells method. Where they lay down flat and they have the screws in their head. You don't want the weights you ever hit the floor if they're unweighted traction. And if they have pins in there you know in their school or anything. They're just going to clean them with regular soap and water. And if one were to become this project, you would want to call the surgeon. Halo Brack. Pharmacologic therapy. High-dose methylprednisone within 8 hours of injury to improve neurologic recovery. Prophylactic anticoagulation therapy. To help prevent DVT. Pharmacologic therapy is primarily symptomatic, pain, constipation, pain medication can come constipation and if they're already at risk of that from immobility and maybe the nerves aren't working in their gut you want to be really careful and proactive about it you want to be careful of infections especially if they're on high doses of steroids hypotension muscle spasticity baclofen
non-pharmacologic therapy. Patients with SEO will require extensive nursing care, maintaining airway and assisting with ventilation, preventing complications. Primary complications, urinary, bowel, gastrointestinal, GI, problems. Primary complications are going to be things that are directly from a spinal cord injury, so you know if you have severed the nerves to your bowel and bladder that's why it's primary. Sec secondary complications, related to immobility, related to immobility such as pressure injuries, pneumonia. Facilitating rehabilitation may include gait training, client teaching for home care, ma making sure that they're in good spirits that you're keeping their motivation up. NUTS and bolts. Teaching points for patients, risk factors for SCI, spinal precautions for safety. Secondary complications of SCI, pressure injuries, respiratory issues. Spinal shock, autonomic dysreflexia, mobility issues, expected outcomes for complete versus incomplete SCI, there's no coming back from complete, you've severed the nerves, you're not getting them back. Nursing interventions for SCI patients, expected clinical manifestations of patient in relation to where injury is. Autonomic dysreflexia, signs and symptoms, treatment options, consequences of non-treatment. Pinnal shock, signs and symptoms, treatment options, how long it lasts. Patient is admitted to ICU after MVA. Patient arrives in a cervical collar on a stretcher. She reports that she cannot feel her arms or her legs. Imaging in the ED showed that she has a C5 injury. She asks you if she will ever be able to move her arms and legs again. Explain how you move this patient to the ICU bed. Be specific. Log rolling. What clinical manifestations do you expect from a C5 injury? What will be a priority in your assessments? Airway. How do you answer her question? We would have to see after the swelling comes down and really, the doctor would be able to give her more information about her prognosis. MD comes to see the patient and believes that she is in spinal shock. Explain to the patient what spinal shock is. Spinal shock is it's a low provision due by the spinal cord swelling. What do you expect the MD to prescribe to treat this? What side effects could she have from this medication? Steroids elevated blood sugar levels, infection, spinal fractures can happen take them for a long time too that's why they don't always give them because they have to decide whether the risk benefit what do you expect from the vital signs from spinal shock, blood pressure goes high that's autonomic dysreflexia, lower perfusion to the spinal cord.